Yeah, hello everybody and welcome to this unboxing with myself John. In this one we're going to be checking out the um oh I have to remember Heavy Tank Hunter Kampf Group for Flames of War. This is for the German bulge uh release. And you're getting a fair amount in this. You're getting some infantry, you're getting a few main battle tanks, Panzer IVs, you're getting some artillery, you're getting some anti-tank, and you're getting the, your infantry is motorized as well, and some reconnaissance as well, which is kind of interesting in the form of two Pumas. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get down to the desk and see what we get. All right then, let's see what we have in our heavy tank hunter Kampf group. So the box shows basically everything. Let's flip over to the back here so we get a more accurate assessment. So three Jag Panthers, two Hornies tank destroyers, three Hummels, two Ostwinds, that's your anti-aircraft. You have a little bit of a core of regular battle tanks with our three Panzer IVs, a bit of scouting element with two Pumas. They could also be support for our infantry, which are mounted in four half tracks. We get one Panzer Shrek team, one unit leader with an MG42 team, and six MG42 teams. So it's a fairly rounded box. Um, the armor, the heaviest armor you have here is the Jag Panther, and you've only got three of those in the box. Um, what I'd say is going to be an interesting combination here is the infantry, Panzer IVs, Pumas, and the Hummels, um, with Ostwinds as well, because they can help with uh, anti anti personnel as well as uh, anti aircraft. But I think everyone wants Jag Panthers. A lot of people like those. Uh, I believe the, the Hornies and the Hummel are the new kits as well. So we're going to open the box up and take a look for ourselves. As usual, these boxes are on the verge of being too big or too small for the amount of stuff that we get in them, which means it's very hard to get this stuff back in the box. So let's just pull it all out, make a big mess on my table. <clears throat> yep. Okay, cool. That is the contents of our box. So as usual, we start off with the um, start here booklet, which will give us the instructions for building everything. And what is nice in here is that although the um, the box says you want to build Jag Panthers. You're also getting the instructions to build the top half uh, of the Panther as well because they're the same chassis, so you can intermingle those with a, a bit of possibly clever magnetization. The Hornies and Hummel again are the same kit there, the new plastic kit for this release, and we get all the options there for them as well. Not too sure if you're going to be able to. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to magnetize too much here, depending if you want to sacrifice a little bit of um, accuracy on the vehicle itself. You can probably build everything but magnetize the gun, the um, mantlet and the outer uh, piece of armor as well to make sure they all fit. I don't know if I'd really want to do that or not, but it depends how you feel when you get to, um, to coming around to building it. Again, on the instructions, again, another nice touch. We're able to build build the Ostwind or the Warblewind, which shows both turrets being built there as well. And I believe there's enough parts to make both the turrets and set one aside. So you're a lot more interchangeable with the Ostwind kit. Then we have Panzer IV. Again, Panzer IV is nothing new. It's been around for quite a while now. Same with the Puma. Although I've never gotten around to building one of the Pumas, I think I'm going to in this video. A few people have asked me, you know, where's the build stuff? I'm going to build stuff this time. So again, Pumas, quite cool. We've got options again for two different turrets. So we have the Puma 50mm uh, gun or the STKFZ234 flak turret, you know, basically the 20mm one. There's options in here as well that show, you know, this one only goes on the Puma with the 50mm gun, whatever. Half tracks, again, the standard bread and butter 251 half track, which has the options for it to make it with the 37 millimeter or just a machine gun. So nothing too out of the ordinary there and a little bit on our troops. So we also get a army list at the back. So what we're getting here is 97 points with um, Jag Panther being the HQ with two Jag Panthers as its um, platoon. We get a Hornies Tank Hunter platoon of two vehicles, two Ostwinds, we get our Pan Armoured Panzer Grenadier Platoon, seven uh, MG42 teams, and we get the four half-tracks. Brigade Panzer IV Platoon, which of three tanks, 
the Hummel Artillery of three vehicles and a Puma Scout Troop of two. So all in all, let's see what they recommend to expand, if they have anything to expand. What's next? Obviously we're getting our Tiger Twos, which are new plastics in this release. We're getting our triple 15mm flak platoon, which is more 251 half tracks with a different anti-aircraft option. And we have the Hetzers as well. Now that's, that's a pretty good recommendation, I would say, uh, in all honesty. The flak platoon, maybe not as useful as the Ostwind or the Whirlwind. Hetzers, yeah, if you're going to lean more into the, the Panzer Jaeger battalion kind of ideal. Um, honestly... Where I would go with this is just to throw more infantry into it. So I would probably take another platoon of infantry and run uh, an infantry company alongside the uh, the tank hunters just to expand that out a bit. What I'd probably remove is the Hornices and just keep the Hummels there as my artillery support. That said, we have a lot of plastic to get through. Some of this we've seen before, so let's not dwell too long on that. Um, this is one of the new sprues. Let me move <laughs> nearly everything else out of the way here. Because again, this table is quite limited. So we have the Hummel Horny Sprue, which is pretty decent. So we have our upper lower hulls here, our tracks, sides, the two pieces for the outer part of the armor uh, for the either or the two gun mantlets the gun mount is basically the same for both guns here so either our long 88 or the gun for the hummel which i can't remember is a 150 or a 128 or something i can't remember um being based on a panzer 4 it's more or less very familiar to anyone that's built a panzer 4 in the past so not a terrible amount of new details on the tracks. It looks like they've changed the wheels a little bit, added a touch more detail into the back wall there, just to change things up a little bit and make sure it's as accurate as they can make it at this scale. That's absolutely fine. So we have, what, three of those, four of those? We have as many as we have vehicles. So we'll move on to the Puma, because I like the Puma. This, this sprue is a very versatile sprue because we're not only getting options for the base Puma with the 50mm, we're getting the open-topped one, which has the short 75, also has the options to mount the Pack 40 on it as well. One of the more and most versatile sprues uh, Battlefront have done in quite a while, for the Germans at least. Um, there's not much else to say other than we can talk about it a bit more once we've built it and um, get a play with it. So, moving on, we have... A single sprue for our Ostwind and Warblewind. So yes, we can build both turrets and set them aside. We They even give us two turret pegs as well, which is great. Again, nice little choices that they're making here that work well and um, give us a lot of versatility, a lot of mileage out of a lot of these kits, which is what we look for as players or even collectors, because I'm more of a collector, as you well know. One half of our Panther sprue. Uh, this is just the uh, tracks and a lot of the upper hull details. Don't worry too much about that. That's all familiar if you've ever built a panther or a plastic panther. Uh, over here we have the Panzer IV sprue. Now this sprue is going to take... Uh, there's going to be enough in this box to do everything as Panzer IVs that are based on that. That's including the Ostwind slash Warblewind. Uh, they will use this sprue, but obviously use the turret sprue uh, to make those vehicles instead. So there's potential options here to even just build the Panzer IV turret and just switch them all over to Panzer IVs if you feel like it. Again, the more mileage you get as a collector and player, the better you want, uh, the better um, versatility and usage you're going to get with a lot of these kits. If you don't mind a lot of turrets and stuff lying around uh, in your carry bags, that's fine. More Panzer IV sprues. And then we get to the other, other Panzer IV sprue. <laughs> so we have this one, which is a more basic one. And then we get the later version Panzer IV sprue, which has all the shirts in and stuff on the side. Again, a different turret, upper and lower. Same gun. Again, build all the parts if you want and just set it all aside and just have as much mileage out of this as you can get. I think you're going to do pretty well with this so let's move that to the side as well then we have our half tracks our 251 half track sprue this is familiar to a lot of people that play germans or have played germans in the past five six years i think 
Got a little bit of a warpage on this one, but that's not a big deal. You could probably bend that back out with a bit of heat. You can actually kind of see the way the light hits it. You can see where the warp has come from a bit of excessive heat on the injection, perhaps, or perhaps the, the plastic was starting to cool when this part of the injection mold was filled. Either or, doesn't matter. Not a terrible problem. But again, all, all in all, when this replaced the metal resin hybrid kit, this was definitely one of the best models that they had out there at the time. It's not really been superseded by much. What it has has be, become a bit more of a standard, like a bit of a, a setting the standard of what they want to do going forward with the level of their plastic kits in detail and versatility, which is absolutely great. Now, there are more half tracks to move out of the way. And then we get to our Panther Yag Panther sprue. This is our upper hull and lower hull. Again, want to build the lower hull all the same, perfect. Maybe see if you can magnetize these upper hulls so you can switch out between a Yag Panther and a standard Panther. That would be pretty cool. I think that's pretty doable. You guys can let me know in the comments because I've not really built a lot of this, with uh, particularly with versatility in mind. So you can let me know if you guys already do that. And if you do, please show me. So that'll be good. Move that to the side. I think we've covered all the basic sprues apart from some of our infantry. So we have a Panzer Grenadier platoon. Comes with two of these larger infantry sprues. I think these are... No, these are different. I don't think I've seen these ones before. Um, I was going to say these are almost like the Hit the Beach plastics. They're very similar to the Hit the Beach plastics, but I think they're different. Um, they have helmet covers and all sorts of stuff going on there. Can't honestly remember. But again, all useful, all handy. And uh, pretty decent detail in there as well. There's a few people that prefer this over this, which in this case is our artillery crews and stuff and our vehicle crews for our Hummels and Hornices and stuff like that. I think they're getting better detail out of this resin than they're getting in the plastic. But once they're painted, I don't think you're going to see much of a difference. And then after that, we have half track um, personnel. We have uh, Panzer Shrek teams and stuff in this little baggie as well. So again, plenty of things to be working on. Now, in the baggie, as per usual, we have our rule book. We are coming, to, well, I am definitely coming down with um, Flames of War. Flames of War 4th edition rule books at the moment. I cannot give these things away and I probably won't either because if I lose one I've got about another 8 or 9 <laughs> in hand. In our smaller baggie we have our stack cards, our unit cards, and we have uh, transfer sheets as well for our what look to be Hermann Goering division um, vehicle markings as well as generic uh, Panzer markings and half-track markings. So with that all said and done, I'm going to go ahead and build a few. I'm going to build one of each of these kits. And um, I might even see if there's a way to optionalize some of these kits as well, just, just to try it out. So when we come back, let's have a look at some built stuff. So here I have a selection of our models built. And I thought I would build just a little bit of them because I know we've seen Panzer IVs before. We've seen half tracks and, and verbal and Ost winds as well. But what I wanted to look at really was the Hummel, but we'll get to that. So laying them out like this, you get to see the size comparison here. And Jag Panthers are not a small vehicle at all. They are they are quite a substantial piece of equipment. They're what over forty tons, and uh, they have that long eighty eight on them, which is more or less the same gun that a uh, a Tiger II has. So a lot of firepower in something that is not exactly low profile. But has a big sloped front, it's got a good amount of heavy armour on the front and is perfect for ambushing uh, in sort of kind of foresty sort of hedge, high grass sort of stuff. This vehicle could hull down quite easily because of how high that gun is mounted in the hull. So you can see just how much of the vehicle could actually be hidden uh, behind, you know, a piece, of, a piece of terrain or something like that. You know, you've got nearly two thirds of the vehicle that you're able to hide uh, hull down. Made it a very good ambusher and um, just 
uh, it seems to be like a fairly capable vehicle overall. Uh, I know there's a lot of reports out there of the Jag Panthers performing fairly well, especially when it was um, units that already had experience with the self-propelled anti-tank guns. Um, some units obviously would have transferred from tanks into these or uh, something like that, and it, it gets a little different here and there. Um, overall, though, it's a nice kit. We've seen it before, I think, as well. We, we have talked about Jag Panthers in the past. Now, what I want to expand on here is that I haven't glued the upper to the lower at all. And that is because, yes, if you haven't already um, had experience with doing it, when you build this, there's enough parts left across the two sprues that you get with the Jag Panther to build a Panther G uh, upper hull as well. Just, you know, it, it just sits nicely over the top of that again as well. So you, you can potentially have two vehicle options out of the same kit, which is very, very good. Something I like about that versatility. I think versatility is the theme of this video. On to our 251 half track. Once you've put the figures and stuff into it, it looks a little off scale. I think the, the benches actually let you sit a little lower in a 251. I can't quite remember. I've, it's been that long since I've sat in anything that was like it. I sat in an OT-180. And um, yeah, they were about, they're more or less the same dimensions inside and out. So. But again, just a charming looking vehicle. Easy to put together. Has some interior detail, which we all either really enjoy or really hate because you have to go in and maybe paint it. But if you feel like being a bit more of a completionist, you can go in there and paint it as you build it if you really feel like it. However, it remember, it is a wargaming model. We're not too concerned about getting the most accuracy out of our vehicles so long as they look the part and the 251 definitely looks the part. On to our Puma. Puma, again, it's an easy kit to build. It has options in there that if you're clever with your gluing and possible magnetizing, you can get some of the other variants of the kit or out of the kit and make them available for you as well. It really does depend how flexible you want your collection to be. Uh, I tend to just build an army list to a set way and I kind of just keep it that way, probably much to my detriment uh, as a collector. Um, I have a lot of spare plastic after a, a, a kit build which in reality I should probably try and utilize a bit better. But there you go. The Puma is a nice, solid looking kit. Good detail, not too bad underneath. Goes together fairly well. I like that the wheels are always paired uh, on the sprue, so it's really not, pardon me, it's not as much of a hassle as uh, some people think of it. So all in all, yep, good kit. On to our Verbal Wind in this case, I built it as a Verbal because I think in the last unboxing where we had this multi-kit, I built it as an Ostwind, but I had the Verbal uh, turret built separately as well. So again, another kit that you can interchange in and out. And if you build the rest of the spare parts on the kit, you can fit a Panzer IV turret on that as well. That way you have a Panzer IV without Schertzen, so you have, I think, is an H model um, without the Schertzen on it. <clears throat> it's still fine for late war. You can just say that it, it's just an accompanying Panzer IV or a unit of Panzer IVs that haven't had that <clears throat> particular modification added. So on the turrets, the Ostwind and the Verbal Wind, in this instance, the Verbal Wind is pretty easy to put together. <clears throat> because we have these four barrels, the way you can build it, you can build it so that the guns move up and down. You've got to be careful with your gluing. Obviously, I've put these in place, they don't move anymore, but you can move them. Only really comes in useful if you're packing the vehicles away after use and just lower those guns a bit so that they're not sticking around inside your packing uh, case and potentially getting damaged. So overall, another good solid kit. On to the new plastic that's in this box, the Hummel. And I've built it as a Hummel, not a Hornies. Um, because I've already built one previously, I did. Uh, I'm not sure where that video is currently, if it's out or not, don't know. Um, but this, because it came in the starter box and it wasn't just um, being handed a sprue, I actually had some crew figures for this one as well to play with. Overall, this is a nice tidy kit. Be careful about these uh, large side panels. Make sure they're in the correct position because you can see on this case, I haven't done that. And what I'm left with is a little bit of a gap here from the front armor to the side armor. You might want to green stuff that up a little bit if you haven't built it carefully like I haven't. Um, but as always, it's another nice kit. They have changed 
a couple of things on the Panzer IV base chassis. You can see this isn't just um, the same part over again. This is a differently molded part. I think this, the, the one on the Hummel, looks a little more accurate than what this one is because I don't think there would necessarily be this void behind there, but it's a different style of um, sprocket wheel as well. So I think this is the earlier type sprocket wheel and this is the later type one. You guys can tell me in the comments if I'm right or wrong in that assumption. But it's nice that they're not just rehashing the same thing over again. There is going to be variation in them because these vehicles were built at different times. Different modifications were available to the factories throughout production uh, of different vehicles, even when they were based on the same hulls. Um, and I'm also noticing this is actually longer. They did extend the Panzer IV chassis out there, so you can almost ignore everything I said, but it's nice that they're not, they've remodeled this whole thing instead of just uh, running with existing uh, 3D files. Overall, and I haven't built any infantry for this because infantry are infantry. We know how they go together. You glue them onto the base and you have them on a base at the end. Overall, we're looking at a fairly decent uh, starter set here. Again, what I always like to talk about is ensuring that <clears throat> there is plenty of variation uh, between, you know, you're getting a flavor for everything. But anyway, that's a look around the models. We'll um, pull back to our front and I will round the video up. So what do I think about this box? Well, it's, again, as I've talked about in several of my Flames of War and World War III uh, unboxings, it gives you a flavor of gameplay. It gives you a bit of artillery, anti-tank, regular tank combat, some infantry with motorized options, and in this one, a bit of reconnaissance as well, which is quite interesting. So from a gameplay perspective, a new player coming to the game with this box is going to get an idea of what they like, what they enjoy playing, what works well for them and what doesn't, dice rolling aside, of course. Um, but overall, they're getting a good feel for what the game has to offer them in so much as gameplay and collecting, building and painting. So this particular box, I would rate fairly high for being a new player friendly thing. And the fact that we always get these start here pamphlets with a bit of recommended expansion uh, in the back is something that I like to see. I think there's plenty of other games companies that either need to do that or need to update them a little bit as well. So. I'm not going to hammer this box too hard because the only thing that's really new in it is the Hummel uh, slash Hornies kit. Um, everything else, uh, as far as I'm aware, including the infantry sprues, I think is stuff that we've seen before. So I'm not going to say that it's lacking something because I really don't think it is. Not at a first glance anyway. You'd obviously have to build it and then go and have a game with it and see what it's like because it obviously offers you the 100 point list. Uh, which you can expand up to with another 20, 30 points uh, to get it to a more tournament level. So my recommendation would be if you're starting with this box, get more infantry, be it motorized or otherwise, and um, get the book, have a look through it with the command cards and unit cards and stuff and just see what works for you uh, from that book. Uh, but in general, I think this is quite a good solid box, definitely staying along uh, the lines of what they've done with a lot of their Flames of War boxes, bar a few exceptions which don't have infantry in them. I think in general, most of the, the World War II side, uh, the Flames of War side, is giving you a good, solid beginning, you know, a first solid step uh, if you're a new player. And if you're a returning player, you're getting more of those sort of core elements uh, to your army as well. So you're getting your artillery in there. And... Um, you're getting some infantry as well. So I know a lot of experienced players uh, that have been in this hobby for a long time, particularly with Flames of War, will already have, probably as a German player, a mass of the likes of Panzer IVs and half tracks and stuff like that. So you're, you're coming to this with the, the idea of some of these models aren't necessarily going to be used, um, but there's plenty of options in there and there's a lot of versatility with the kits, particularly the Panther that you can switch between a Panther G and a Jagdpanther. I like having that level of foresight in kit design uh, that with a little bit of magnetization or a little bit of blue tack or something like that, you can just switch those vehicles out and run a different list essentially. But with that all said and done, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, take care and see you again soon.
go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.